After the Anglo-Saxon conquest of England in the 5th century, four major kingdoms would emerge, Northumbria, Wessex, Mercia, and East Anglia. By the 8th century, Offa the King of Mercia was expanding his territory, aiming to make Mercia the dominant kingdom in England. Offa the King of Mercia would expand Mercia through the sword, with his character becoming legend. He won an important victory over Sinwulf, the King of Wessex at the time, at the Battle of Bensington. The battle, led by King Offa, ended with victory for the Mercians, which resulted in the West Saxons recognising Mercian overlordship. In the year 762, King Offa exploited an unstable situation in Kent. Kent had a long tradition of joint kingship, with East and West Kent under separate kings, though one king was typically dominant. Prior to the year 762, Kent was ruled by Ethelbert II and Aidbert I. Aidbert's son, Erd Wolf, is also recognised as a king. Ethelbert died in the year 762, and by the year 764, King Offa of Mercia had granted land at Rochester in his own name with Heobert on the witness list as the King of Kent. King Offa was playing the political game to grow his influence. Heobert would soon become the King of Kent, and Offa would be perceived as his overlord, as Offa's influence had helped place him on the throne. However, in the year 784, a new King of Kent, Aylmund, appears in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Aylmund was the father of Egbert, who would later become the King of Wessex. Aylmund does not appear to have survived long in power, as there is no record of his activities after the year 784. There is, however, extensive evidence of Offa's domination of Kent during the late 780s, with his goals apparently going beyond overlordship, to the outright annexation of the kingdom. He has been described as the rival, not the overlord of the Kentish kings. It is also possible that the young Egbert fled to Wessex in the year 785 or so, fearing for his life during this time, as he would have been a young man in his teens. In the year 786, Sinwulf, the king of Wessex, was murdered. He was a victim of a surprise attack at his mistress's house. After Sinwulf's death, his vacant throne was contended by Egbert, However, Beotric also made a claim for the crown of Wessex, and thanks to him being married to Offa's daughter, he had the backing of the King of Mercia, with Mercia being the most powerful kingdom in the land. Beotric was soon crowned the King of Wessex, and Egbert was driven into exile. Land that had traditionally been on the borders of Mercia and Wessex were administered by the Mercian court. The West Saxons were even using Offa's currency, portraying his overlordship in South England. King Offa also became the overlord of East Anglia, and had King Ethelbert II beheaded in the year 794. The execution of an Anglo-Saxon king on the orders of another ruler were very rare, portraying King Offa's attitude towards dominion and subjugation of the other kingdoms through fear. King Offa would die in the year 796. He was succeeded by his son, Ecfrith of Mercia, but according to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, he died after only 141 days on the throne. Since King Offa had murdered most of his relatives in order to eliminate dynastic rivals, his line ended. In the words of the historian Simon Keynes, Offa was driven by a lust for power, not a vision of English unity, and what was left was reputation, not a legacy. It is now believed that Offa thought himself as the King of the Mercians, and that his military success were part of the transformation of Mercia from an overlordship of Midland peoples into a powerful, aggressive kingdom. However, Offa would always be remembered as a warrior king, who ruled Mercia when it was the dominant kingdom in England. After King Offa's death in the year 796, Mercian power over England was weakened, and Beotric, the King of Wessex, may have exercised more independence during this period. However, he didn't last long on the throne, 
as he had died from being accidentally poisoned by his wife, Eadbur. Beotric was succeeded by Egbert, who was recalled from exile. Whilst Egbert was in exile, he went to the court of Charlemagne, the King of the Franks, who would later be crowned as the Emperor of the Romans. Egbert's reign was supported by Charlemagne, which helped him establish himself as the King of Wessex, and by the year 802, he was crowned. The Mercians continued to oppose Egbert. On the day of his ascension, the Hwais, who were a tribal kingdom, but were very much still part of Mercia, attacked under the leadership of their elderman, Ethelmund. This would culminate in the Battle of Kepsford, which occurred on the 16th of January, when Ethelmund led a group of warriors from Mercia in a raid against the people of Wessex. However, Weoxtan, a Wessex elderman, met him with the men of Wiltshire, driving the forces of Mercia back across the river. Both leaders, however, were slain. Nothing more is recorded of Egbert's relation with Mercia for over 20 years after this battle. It seems likely that Egbert had no influence outside his own borders, but on the other hand, there is no evidence that he ever submitted to the overlordship of Senwulf, who became the King of Mercia shortly after the death of King Offa and his son Ecfrith. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, in the year 815, King Egbert laid waste to West Wales, from eastward to westward. Thus, he became the overlord of the Cornish. King Egbert isn't mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle again until the year 825, when he finally clashes with Mercia. In between the years 815 and 825, the crown of Mercia was being passed around with the kings being crowned swiftly and then dying. Sionwulf, the successor of the warrior king Offa and his son Ecfrith, would die in the year 821. His brother Seolwulf would then take the Mercian crown. The Anglo-Saxon chronicle states that Seolwulf was deprived of his kingdom. This could indicate that his successor, Berenwulf, was a usurper that had taken the Mercian throne in a coup or uprising. Nevertheless, in the year 823, Beonwulf would seize the Mercian crown. Mercia was still a powerful kingdom, as the warrior king Offa had left it upon his death. However, his descendants wouldn't share the glory of the kingdom he'd forged. During the 8th century and the early 9th century, the king of Mercia had exercised a supremacy over the kingdoms of southeastern England imposing their overlordship at times, and even exercising direct rule. However, after the death of Offa in the year 796, Mercia's dominion over the land wasn't the same. After Berenwulf had seized the Mercian crown, he would take advantage of Egbert's preoccupation with warfare against the Britons of Cornwall, and would plan an attack on the Kingdom of Wessex. This would culminate in the Battle of Ellendon, Egbert was in Cornwall with his army, when he received word that the Mercians had invaded Wessex. Egbert led his army back into Wessex, and met Berenwulf and his army. Although greatly outnumbered, Egbert would fight with his son Ethelwulf, and according to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, it was a bloodbath, and it describes the scene. Egbert got the victory, and there a great slaughter was made. The fighting was so fierce that the medieval chronicler Henry of Huntingdon, writing 300 years after the event, noted, Egbert engaged in battle against Beornwulf, the King of Mercia at Ellendon, whence it is said, Ellendon's stream was reddened with blood, was stopped up with the fallen, was filled with stench. After enormous slaughter had been perpetrated on both peoples there, Egbert was the mournful victor. Berenwulf, however, escaped the carnage and fled. The battle was costly to both sides in loss of life. The victory over Mercia shifted the balance of power to Egbert. He was now the most accomplished king in southern England. Immediately, Egbert sent his son Ethelwulf with an army to overthrow Baldred, the Mercian sub-king of Kent. As a result, 
All of Kent, Surrey, Sussex and East Anglia submitted to Egbert. Wessex would double in size overnight, and Egbert was quickly growing his political influence, wealth and power over England. The consequences of Ellendon went beyond the immediate loss of Mercian power in the southeast. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, the East Anglians asked for Egbert's protection against the Mercians, as in the year 826, Beonwulf, the King of Mercia, invaded East Anglia to recover his overlordship. However, with his power and influence much depleted after the Battle of Ellendon, there was a rebellion in East Anglia, and Beonwulf himself was slain. After the death of the King of Mercia, Ludeca was crowned as king. Ludeca had the same idea as his predecessor Beonwulf, and he too tried to subjugate East Anglia. According to Florence of Worcester, writing 300 years after the event, this is what transpired. Ludeca, King of the Mercians, mustered his forces and led an army into the province of the East Angles, for the purpose of taking vengeance for the death of King Beronwulf, his predecessor. He was quickly met by the natives and their king, who in a severe battle, slew him and five of his eldermen, and very many of his troops. Wigalf then succeeded to his splendid kingdom. King Egbert of Wessex knew that the situation in Mercia was unstable. With his own power now having overtaken Mercia's due to the kingdom's instability, in the year 829, Egbert would invade Mercia and drove Wigalf its king into exile. Egbert's defeat of Wigalf in the year 829 completed his dominion of southern England, and Egbert went on to receive the submission of King Ernard of Northumbria. According to a later chronicler of the 13th century, Roger of Wendover, Egbert invaded Northumbria and plundered it before Ernard submitted. When Egbert had obtained all of the southern kingdoms, he led a large army into Northumbria and laid waste to the province with severe pillaging and made King Ernard pay tribute. These events led the anonymous scribe who wrote in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle to describe Egbert as the eighth Bretwalder, an old English word for rulers who have achieved overlordship of some or all other Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. It can also be translated to mean the ruler of Britain. King Egbert would remain in control of Mercia until the year 830, he was in power there long enough to issue coins bearing his name. Egbert had finally attained the power that King Offer of Mercia had when he exiled him all those years ago, but while the Saxons were busy fighting each other, dragon-headed longships were gliding across the sea from the icy north, with pagan warriors lusting for battle and plunder. In the year 830, Egbert led a successful expedition against the Welsh, almost certainly with the intent of extending West Saxon influence into the Welsh lands. This marked the high point of Egbert's influence over England. Mercia would soon regain its independence under Wigalf. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle merely says that Wigalf obtained the Kingdom of Mercia again, but the most likely explanation is that this was a result of a Mercian rebellion against Wessex rule. Thus, Egbert's overlordship over most of England would collapse. Despite the loss of dominance, Egbert's military success fundamentally changed the political landscape of Anglo-Saxon England. Wessex retained control of the southern eastern kingdoms, with the possible exception of Essex and Mercia, and did not regain control of East Anglia with King Ethelstan minting his own coins. This is not surprising, as it was King Ethelstan who was probably responsible for the defeat of both Beronwulf and Ludeca, who were the kings of Mercia at the time. Nevertheless, Egbert's fragile overlordship over England was over. The damage had already been done. However, Mercia was never again able to regain the status it once had the independence of East Anglia and Egbert's control of the southeast were here to stay. 
In the latter years of Egbert's reign, a more ominous threat loomed from across the water. Arriving in longboats, and with a formidable reputation, the arrival of the Vikings was about to turn England and its kingdoms upside down. With Vikings launching raids on the Isle of Sheppey and Kent in the year 835, their presence looked increasingly dangerous to Egbert's territory. The following year, he would be forced to engage in the Battle of Carhampton, involving the crews of 35 ships, resulting in great bloodshed. At this battle, Egbert would taste defeat against the formidable Vikings, but he would fight them again at the Battle of Hingston Down in Cornwall. From the years 815 and onwards, Egbert had raided Cornwall from east to west, and the Cornish people had remembered their subjugation and would ally themselves with the Vikings. According to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, this is what transpired. In this year, a great naval force arrived among the West Welsh, and the latter, combined with them, proceeded to fight against Egbert, King of the West Saxons and put both the Welsh and the Danes to flight. Egbert died in the year 839. In the year before his death, he would assure the succession of his son Ethelwulf. King Egbert was generally seen as an effective and good king. He stabilised the Kingdom of Wessex, and his familial line ruled until the middle of the 10th century. Indeed, it's said that without the reign of Egbert of Wessex, the beginning of the unification of England under his grandson Alfred the Great may never have been possible. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you all soon for another History Profile.